Like you don't need to have all these things, but you better have most of them. Family, friends, career, educational goals, plans for, you know, time outside of work, uh, attention to your mental and physical health, etc. You know, those are, that's what life is about. And if you don't have any of those things, well, then all you've got left is misery and suffering. So that's, that's a bad, that's a bad deal for you. So, so once you, but once you set up that, that goal structure, let's say, and that's really, in many, in many ways, that's what you should be doing at university. It's, it's, that's exactly what you should be doing, is trying to figure out who it is that you're trying to be, right? And you, you, you aim at that. And then you use everything you learn as a means of building that person that you want to be. And, and I really mean want to be. I don't mean should be, even those things, those things are going to overlap. And it's important to distinguish between those because that's partly, and this is back down to the micro routine analysis. So if I was saying, well, you're going to try to make yourself more industrious. Okay, number one, specify your damn goals. Because how are you going to hit something if you don't know what it is? That isn't going to happen. And often people won't specify their goals too because they don't like to specify conditions for failure. So if you keep yourself all vague and foggy, which is real easy because that's just a matter of not doing as well, then you don't know when you fail. And people might say, well, I really don't want to know when I fail because that's painful. So I'll, I'll keep myself blind about when I fail. That's fine, except you'll fail all the time then. You just won't know it until you failed so badly that you're done. And that can easily happen by the time you're 40. So, so I would recommend that you don't let that happen. So that's willful blindness, right? You could have known, but you chose not to. Okay, so once you get your goal structure set up, you think, okay, if I could have this life, looks like that might be worth living despite the fact that it's going to be you know anxiety provoking and threatening and there's going to be some suffering and loss involved and all of that obviously the goal is to to have a vision for your life such that all things considered that justifies your effort okay so then what do you do well then then you turn down to the micro routines it's like okay well this is what i'm aiming for how does that instantiate itself day to day week to week month to month and that's where something like a schedule can be unbelievably useful. Google Calendar. It's like, make a damn schedule and stick to it. Okay, so what's the rule with the schedule? It's not a bloody prison. That's the first thing that people do wrong. They say, well, I don't like to have, follow a schedule. It's like, well, what kind of schedule are you setting up? Well, I, sh I have to do this, then I have to do this, then I have to do this. You know, and then I just go play video games because who wants to do all these things that I have to do? It's like, wrong. Set the damn schedule up so that you have the day you want. That's the trick. It's like, okay, I've got tomorrow. If I was gonna set it up so it was the best possible day I could have, practically speaking, what would it look like? Well, then you schedule that. And obviously there's a bit of responsibility that's gonna go along with that because if you have any sense, one of the things that you're gonna insist upon is that at the end of the day, you're not in worse shape than you were that, than at the beginning of the day, right? Because that's a stupid day. If you have a bunch of those in a row, you just dig, you know, you dig yourself a hole and then you bury yourself in it. It's like, sorry, that's just not a good strategy. It's a bad strategy. The first thing I would say is, well, you should be afraid of taking risks and pursuing something meaningful. But you should be more afraid of staying where you are if it's making you miserable. You're paying a price by sitting there being miserable. You might say, well, the devil I know is better than the one I don't. It's like. Don't be so sure of that. The clock is ticking. Yeah, and if you're miserable in your job now and you change nothing in five years, you'll be much more miserable and you'll be a lot older. But isn't so, it a luxury to pursue what is meaningful? I don't remember now. I'm not talking about what makes you happy. It's a luxury to pursue what makes you happy. It's a moral obligation to pursue what you find meaningful. And that doesn't mean it's easy. It might require sacrifice. If you need to change your job too, let's say you have uh, family and, 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 and children and, and mortgage, you have responsibilities. You've already picked up those responsibilities. You don't just get to walk away scot-free and say, well, I don't like my job, I quit. That's no strategy. But what you might have to do is you think, well, this job is killing my soul. All right, so what do I have to do about that? Well, I have to look for another job. Well, no one wants to hire me. It's like, okay, maybe you need to educate yourself more. Maybe you need to update your, your curriculum vitae, your resume. Maybe you need to overcome your fear of being interviewed. Maybe you need to sharpen your social skills. Like, you, you have to think about these things strategically. If you're going to switch careers, you have to do it like an intelligent, responsible person. That might take you a couple of years of, of, of effort to do properly. 
We're built for struggle, us human beings. We're built to contend with the world. We're built to contend with reality. You want a challenge. And the best way that you can take on a challenge, because a challenge fortifies you. So you don't want to be secure. You want to be strong. And you get strong by taking on optimal challenges. And so you lay out your destiny in the world and you take the slings and arrows of fate. And you make yourself stronger while you're doing so. And you might fail. And fortune might do you in. But it's your best bet. And, you know, people with that have extracted unbelievable successes out of catastrophic failures. And so, and I'm not saying that in a naive way. I know perfectly well what happens to people. You know, you're doing fine in life and then you get cancer. And then six months later, you're dead. And all the heroism in the world isn't going to save you at that point. But that's not the point. That's not the point. Life is bounded by mortality. But that doesn't mean that you don't get out there and contend. And you develop by contending and you minimize the net amount of suffering in the world. And that's something, man. That's something to do. Compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to who someone else is today. Because you need to have a, a hierarchy of improvement. You need to, to be aiming so, for something. And that means you're going to be lesser than people who've always already attained along that dimension. So the question is, who should you defeat in the final analysis? And the answer is, you should defeat your former self. You should be constantly trying to do that. And you're the right control for yourself, too, because you're the one who's had all your advantages and disadvantages. And so if you want to compete fairly with someone, then you should be competing with you. If you're improving yourself, then what you are doing is competing with your lesser self. And then you might also ask, well, what is that lesser self? And that lesser self would be resentful and bitter and aggressive and vengeance seeking and all of those things that go along with having a negative moral character. And those are things that interfere with your ability to progress as you move forward through life. So it's very necessary to understand that this is why you know, I've been stressing this idea of personal responsibility. It's like, well, personal responsibility is to compete with yourself, is to be slightly better than yourself the next day. And it better in some way that you can actually manage, and that's humility. Like, well, I'm a flawed person. I've got all my problems. Could I be as good as person X? It's like, not the right question. The right question is, could you be slightly better tomorrow than your currently flawed self? And the answer to that is, if you have enough humility to set the bar properly low, then you could be better tomorrow than you are today. And you might say, well, what's the right way of being in the world if there is such a thing? And it's not acting according to a set of rules. It's attempting continually to transcend the flawed thing that you currently are. And what's so interesting about that is that the meaning in life is to be found in that pursuit. So I've been laying that out in these discussions too, because it's saying, well, the, the fundamental issue is that life is tragic and difficult, very tragic and difficult for everyone. And it's also tainted by malevolence because no matter how things are tragic and difficult, but there's always some stupid thing that you could do or someone else could do that could make it even worse than it has to be. So that's life. And you need an antidote to that because that can embitter you. Constant contact with that, just the tragedy, but the tragedy combined with betrayal and malevolence, that makes it even worse, especially if it's self-induced. Okay, so you need something to set against that so you don't get bitter and resentful. Well, what do you set against that? Doing something worthwhile, by your own definition, say. You need some reason to get the hell out of bed on a terrible day because you've got something good to do. But what's the best thing you can do? Transcend your current wretched and miserable self. There's meaning to be found in that, and that's a meaning that's associated with responsibility. One of the things that I've been trying to lay out clearly is that life is hard. It's tainted by malevolence and betrayal. That can make you bitter. You need a meaning to offset that. Where's the meaning to be found? Not in rights, not in impulsive pleasure, but in responsibility. You take responsibility for yourself, so you take care of yourself. If you're good at it, you have some excess left over to take care of your damn family. If you're good at both of those, then you have some excess left over to take care of your community. Those are heavy burdens. You pick up the burdens, you find that's meaningful. The best way to pick up the burden is to continually improve yourself. And that's where the meaning is to be found. And so that meaning is in the continual self-transcendence. That's letting your old self die and the new self be reborn. Even if things are going really well for you now, there's going to be a time in the future where things are rough. You know, you're going to be ill. Family members going to be ill. A dream is going to fall apart. You're going to be uncertain about your employment status. Like the, the flood is coming, right? The apocalypse is coming. It's always the case in life and you have to be prepared for it. And the question is how to prepare for it. And the answer to that is to find a way of being that works even under the direst of circumstances. 
you've got the possibility to slowly raise yourself out of the mire. You've got the, the possibility to do just what the fighter does when he's defeated, which is to say, well, regardless of the circumstances that might have led to my defeat, like even if there were errors on the part of the referee, this is no time to whine about it. This is a time to take stock of what I did wrong so that I could improve it into the future. And that's the right attitude.